Hello everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my new followers and a warm welcome to my regulars. I just thought I'd pop by and create another video and I think I'm going to go for a bit of a seasonal make, that word that we all dread, the Christmas word. So I think I'm going to go for a seasonal make, but I don't want anything too complicated. I never go for anything too overly complicated when I'm doing my Christmas cards because I like them. I like them to look classy, um, not not over cluttered. So we shall we shall make something for our seasonal make. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bray, and I always keep one brayer for my inks uh, and then I keep one brayer for paints because the brayer that has got the paints on gets quite crusty before I clean it and it can often leave marks because and that's great for a mixed media piece that you want texture on um, but for my inks I keep a separate brayer if not just make sure that you clean your paints off regularly if you've only got one brayer so I'm using Pink Frog Smooth Card it's not a watercolour card, it's just um, a smooth card from Pink Frog. So any smooth card is absolutely fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Salvage Patina, Speckled Egg and Wilted Violet. Those colours I'm going to use. And I'm going to start with the Salvage Patina. And let's grab a piece of card just on one side. Let's grab an another piece of card. So I've got another piece of card just on one side, just so that I've got two pieces and I can bray it the excess off. They're both the same card stock, yes. So I'm just going to keep that one to bray her off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my salvaged patina and I'm just going to take the brayer Hold, you don't have to hold, hold the ink pad, you can just leave it there. I just hold the ink pad just because you can then see what I'm doing clearly. So I'm just holding the brayer on my ink pad and I'm just adding a good layer of ink. Now I'm adding a good layer of this one because this is the palest colour, the salvage patina. And it's just a good even layer of colour. I've missed the edges just because I don't need the ink to go across the edges or get a line. You then don't have to worry about any lines. And what I'm going to do is just brayer this onto my card. And when I bray it, I use a light um, flicking motion. So I add the, the brayer and I sort of lift the brayer as I'm sort of flicking. So I lift flick. So it sort of blends the colour on my card. So as you can see, it doesn't look like there's any link, ink left on there, but we'll just bray the excess off here. And there's actually a little bit of ink coming off. You can then go back to your card and just smooth out that colour. So I'm then going to take my speckled egg. So you see what I'm doing now. So you can place your ink pad just down onto your work surface, hold it into place and just add the ink just roll over your ink pad several times just till you get that ink and you, you might not see that much on the camera because that's quite a pale color as well the sat the speckled egg so just take that speckled egg and just make sure you roll it on there and it will all add to the effect of the card so just, if you want a little bit more, just add a little bit more and then bray the excess, any excess off onto this piece of card here. I'm just going to hold this up just so that you can see. So it's, it's relatively smooth, just brayed colour. Now with my next colour, the Wilted Violet, the Wilted Violet is a very strong colour. So I don't want to overpower my design. So what I'm going to do is just flick the brayer. Look how little colour I've got on there. I've just added a touch of that colour on there. And then I'm just going to brayer 
a little bit of the excess just onto my non-stick craft sheet just so I can go on very lightly. So I'm braving the excess off on there and then I'm going to go to my card and it's doing exactly what I want it to do which is lovely and pale, not too overpowering. I can pick this ink up off my non-stick craft sheet and I can go back on. I can remove the excess onto my extra piece of card. Now you can look at your card like so and if you decide that you want a little bit more on there take a little bit of your wilted violet you've got your ink on there then bray it the excess off onto your non-stick craft sheet okay so you've hardly got any on there and then a very light touch just touch very lightly put the excess onto your extra piece of card you can pick up the excess from your non-stick craft sheet and just bray that on there now you can see there's still some on there so just wipe that off just in case you decide you want to add more of the lighter color and this is what we've got beautiful blended backdrop so what i'm going to do then is just add some water into my uh, into my hand and i'm just going to flick it onto the card so add it into my hand and i'm just going to flick the card okay and we just need to leave that for a few seconds so while we're leaving that for a few seconds we'll just wipe up all our flicks of moisture like you do and you can do the same on your other piece of card if you wish but this card that you've just brayed off onto will do for another background or you can just build it up you continue to build it up so as you can see we've now got those if i just hold that up you can see the splatters of water just so that you can see that and you're just going to give that a few seconds just to just to take effect and then what I'm going to do is I'm just grabbing my stamps just while that just reacts a little bit more I'm going to use my little tree I think I'm going to use my little hairs as well I'm going to use the little hairs so the hair stamp is that that's that's called miniatures so I'm using my miniature set 756 which is an A7 stamp set and I'm going to use the woodland stamp set, which has got this little tree on here, because I like using that for some of my seasonal makes. So you just need to get those out. So this is quite wet now. So let's use a piece of kitchen roll just to dab up that excess moisture. Let's just dab that excess moisture up off from the card. You can dry it if you want. I'm trying to avoid just drying only because i'm a woman of a certain age and every time i put the heat too along my body goes to about 300 degrees i know you probably wanted me to share that information didn't you not really so just so you can see you've got a beautiful beautiful background just lovely so what i'm going to do then is i've got you know that i always die cut circles out and i've got this these circles here and i'm going to use one of these circles now this circle is three and a quarter inches in width. You can use any size that you wish. You don't have to use the size I'm using. What you do need is I need your, your ink blending tools, your brushes, or um, I'm using cut and dry foam, whatever your tool of choice. So I just want a little bit of you see, I've got them all here. I've got these little brushes as well. I've got the cut and dry foam. So whichever, whichever is your preference. I've got them all because I've tried them all. I still like my cut and dry foam as well, especially when I'm doing a little project like this because I can really get in there. Right. So what we're going to do is you can dry this if you want or let it dry permanently. Mine's still got a bit of moisture in, but that's fine. I'm still going to work with it. So what I'm going to do is just decide where you want what's going to become your bauble. 
So let's go for it around about there. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to work with the same colours. And it's funny because my ink pads have all got flecks of water on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the salvage patina. Just like we did in the background. Just make sure that you get that cut and dry foam really loaded with ink. Why do I want it loaded with ink? You want it loaded with ink because it stops it dragging against your card if you're blending. So if you don't have enough ink on your implement, then it always drags. So I've got plenty of ink on there. And I'm just going to, just that's it. And then I'm just going to just dab just that ink just around And you, if you want to get rid of any harsh edges, just, just blend, just blend. The oxides are very forgiving, very forgiving. So just blend that. So that is your salvage patina. I'm then going to go to the speckled egg. Now I've got something that's a little bit paler than colour got that many pieces of cut and dry foam because I don't want to go onto the speckled egg with the salvage patina because the salvage patina is actually a lot stronger colour than the speckled egg so the speckled egg the speckled egg sort of tones down the salvage patina in real life it tones it down a little bit but it gives that little bit of sort of a greeny tinge Okay, so I'm just dabbing and then I can just blend those colours out like so. And then what I'm going to do is go to my wilted violet. Now, I, th again, this is an overpowering colour. So I'm dibbing my, dibbing, dabbing my cut and dry foam onto the, the wilted violet ink pad. And like I did with the brayer, I'm taking the excess off. So the excess is here on the on the non-stick craft sheet. And then I'm just going to dab. If you still feel you've got too much, just dab the excess off. And you so, can you see that I'm going off onto the card a little bit? And then sort of coming, coming into the, the circle. And again, you can just blend that so you've got no harsh lines. But can you see all this ink around here? Most of the ink has gone onto the, of the purple, has gone onto the card. So just pick that up. You could just brayer that onto your excess piece of card. So what I'm going to do then, the same as I did before, add the water. And just flick into that circle. I think I'll treat myself to another piece of kitchen roll. Mainly because my hands are soaking wet. We're just going to give that a little bit of time just to just to react. Don't be in too much of a rush, just give it some time just to react on there. Let's give it a few seconds. And then I'm just going to dab the excess. Just so that that moisture is mopped up and you can see how much ink is on your kitchen roll. So just mop the excess up. And then you can just remove that. And as you can see, you've got a circle in the same tones as your background. So what I notice with that, the only thing you need to do is bring your circle back in, bring it back in, and then with the ink that's already remaining on the two um, pieces of cut and dry foam, so the salvage patina, so what you need to do is just make sure it's lined up properly. A little bit more. And just add a little bit of the salvage patina just around the top edge, just so that's a little bit more defined and a little bit of that speckled egg. 
just so it's a lit. So don't add any more ink. Just so the tops are lit that better. Just so the top is a little bit more defined. Just so you can see that. Absolutely love it. Wonderful background. Now we'll just let that rest a few moments. Now we've got this circle, and if I was efficient, I'd have cut the circle out of piece of out of a piece of copier paper. But more often than not, when I come upstairs, I think, oh, I just fancy doing a card, and then I just go off the cuff. So what I'm going to do is take this circle and just draw around onto my copier paper. Now the reason I'm doing this is. If I stamp through this piece of card, there's actually a ridge here. Because it's 300 GSM, there's a ridge there. And when you stamp, you can end up leaving a bit of the stamping out because you've got that thickness of card. So what I'm going to do is just cut it out of copy paper. And I'm just going to cut out on the inside of that circle just then it that way it will keep all the stamping on the inside of my circle and because is because I'm using copier paper this is then got no ridge but if you're die cutting you would die cut at the same time as you die cut the circle my circles were die cut out months ago so let's just place that there so what I've got now is I've got the circle here that's exactly coordinates with the other circle. And what I can do is just place that over my circle. Spend a bit of time just lining that up. OK, you can still see that. Yes. And then I'm going to take my stamp set. Going to take that little tree. Poor thing needs a wipe at the back of it because it's so filthy. Absolutely filthy. You can tell I use it quite a bit. Will it fit on an A7? Yep, fit on an A7 acrylic block. There we go. And then I'm going to grab my morning mist morning mist versifying clair and just there we go so what i'm going to do is just ink my stamp with the morning mist ink and i'm just lifting this up because there's so much rubbish on my desk i don't want it so that you can't see exactly what I'm doing. So I've got the morning mist ink on my tree and then I'm going to add a little bit of the tree there. You don't have to add the whole tree, you can just add parts of it. Now if you remember I haven't dried my card, it's still got that moisture in that card so even more so you need to make sure that that ink is given time to absorb into the card. Obviously, you will let your card dry, unless, like me, you're very impatient, but we need to practice good habits. So if, like me, you've, your card's a little bit wet, I've mine's a little bit wet because I'm demoing and I've not dried the card. So we've got a really pale tree, which I will lift up so that you can see. But I'm going to take the ink again so this is morning mist, ink that up again. You could do your second gen, if you haven't got morning mist, stamp with the nocturne ink and then just use your second generation stamping. Don't use your first generation if you, have, if you haven't got the morning mist. Use your second generation of your nocturne ink just so that it's not as bright. And let's just add a little bit of the branch there with the third, or well, the second generation of the gray. 
In fact, I'll ink that up again because I just want it a little bit darker. There we go. Let's just add a little bit of those. And if I remove this, you can just see, if I just lift that up, whoops, if I just lift that up, you can see that it's nice and, and subtle, not too, too much. I don't want it to be too dark. So what I'm going to do then is let's just place that back. And let's take the little hairs go let's take those little hairs and this time we want those stamped in the black the nocturne because you've got this these trees knocked back in the background because you've stamped it with the gray so it's in the background now if i stamp these with black these will be in the foreground and what i want to do is just decide where i want to add them so let's place our mask or our aperture because it's not a mask because it's not going over the top or our aperture just so that we can decide then where we're going to put the little bunnies. I spend most of my time deciding where the things are going more so than anything else. Oh, good grief, the decisions, the decisions. But this is what I'm like. If I'm creating, I don't, I sort of don't rush the process. So I'm just, you don't need to hold your acrylic block up like this. I'm just doing this because there's too much product on my desk. Just tilt your stamp and you can see if you've got everything covered in ink. So I'm going to stamp these here. And again, I'm just going to give that, now these are not difficult to stamp. You don't need to flex your acrylic block or anything like that. You can use your archival ink because it's a tiny stamp. I use Versafine Claire for all our stamps because the really big stamps, the detailed stamps, need the Versafine Claire ink. That's because the Versafine Claire ink has got a good open time, which means it stays wetter longer. So I'm just allowing that ink just to sit on there, just to absorb into the background. Because you don't want being, to be in too much of a rush, just to, there we go. And you can keep removing your image just so that you can see exactly what you've got. So, What I'm going to do is I also want a tree that is slightly in the foreground as well. So what I'm going to do is grab another A7 acrylic block. And I'm just going to place the tree on again. And what I'm going to do this time is use the Nocturne ink, which is the very, obviously it's very black. And what I'm going to do it's just stamp off very lightly some of that ink. And then I'm just going to stamp. I don't need to worry about masking the hairs off because most of the tree is at the top. So I don't need to worry about that. So I'm hoping that this is a little bit darker than the gray. That's what I'm hoping. it is a little bit darker than that gray and it just gives it a little bit more a little bit more depth which I really like so what I'm going to do this is when I this is why Tracy faffs because she's this is what I spend my life doing faffing because I get engrossed in it in a card and, I'm, and then I start fiddling and messing constantly so I've just inked the top of that tree. 
and again I'm just going to stamp it off lightly and I'm just going to add a little bit of that tree just a little bit of that top of that tree that's better And when you're pulling stamps, often on your acrylic block, give your fingers a little bit of a wipe because they will just be covered. Right. So you can see now. Just adding those light and darkness of imagery just gives you that little bit of depth. Lovely. So what I'm going to do now is put my circle back again and then on the little hair stamp the little miniature stamp is some text so i'm going to use that text and i like it because it's on a small version of text and i'm going to use that gray versifying claire which is morning mist use the morning mist and i'm just going to add A little bit of stamping it'll just give it some depth you can do first generation second generation and third generation if you wish it's entirely up to you so make sure I've got it the right way again using that morning mist first generation and let's add the second generation little bit of second generation up here can't see much let me just show you just so that you can see the stamping just absolutely love it right I don't want any more just a little bit just bring this down a little bit just look at your design and just think oh does it need a little bit more darker stamp in there a little bit there, that's it so just have a look and just see it's worth taking your time over we'll put those stamps away shortly right what i'm going to do now is I'm going to take the grey ink tense pencil and what we're going to do is just add a little bit of shading around here you can use your pastel pencils if you wish you can use your distress oxides to add the shading whichever works for you but just add a little bit of shading just so that it just gives it a little bit of dimension and I'm not using much water initially because I don't want to over overly react with the background let's just add a little bit more so you can pick up the moisture and just pick up a little bit from your pencil as well if you just want it to have a little bit more depth just bring that color that gray out a little bit just to give that a little bit of depth then also oh nearly just put it in the wet just pick up a little bit of that gray of the ink tense pencil and just just give the hairs a little bit of uh, grounding just give them a little bit of grounding just so they don't look like they're floating and then just going to add a little bit just a little bit of is this white pencil working let me just get my black card now really with your white pens you really do need to be working on a dry surface it's, it's always best if you let your card dry and then work with your white it's not very white we've got a whiter one so it is always best if you 
doesn't even come through yet. So I trace your faffs with the white pencils. That's it, I've got that one working a bit more. So you just need to make sure that you work on a dry surface. You can also use your pastel pencils and smudge a little bit of pastel pencil on there. Just to give a little bit of a little bit of white just just on there. And when it dries a little bit more, I'll I'll go over that little bit of white area. I've also got um, this bleed proof white, which is Dr. P. H. Martin's. Uh, got mine from Amazon. Uh, and the idea is that when you splatter with this, you don't get the distress oxides bleeding through the, the colour. It stays pure white. So what I'm going to do is just cover that up. Let's just take, find a brush. Uh, okay. Let's take a little bit of this. Spritz that with water. Let me just grab a piece of card just to cover that bottom area. Just going to add some splatters of white. Let me just just want to make sure that none of those splatters of white go over my other background apart from the circle. So just flick like so. Plenty there. I didn't actually need as much out of the tin as I pulled out. You know, there's there's loads of excess there that you just don't need to pull out. It's just a waste. Okay. Let's move all these out of the way just so that you can see. And it always looks better when you look at it through the camera for me, but I've got those white on there and this will stay white because the colour doesn't bleed through, which I love. Right, let's just add our little, just picked up a hair, so just like that. Let's just create Our bauble. So I'm just creating a little bauble top. So I'm just creating a little bauble top. Um, what was I just going to do? Just going to add a little. Again, I'm trying to add white on ink that's, you know, it's not quite dry. So I'm trying to add a little bit of white on there before it's even dry, which I don't like to do. So what I'm going to do now is to give this more depth and um, uh, to add to the composition so that it feels like that this has got more depth to it. I'm going to add these hairs down here as well. So just take these hairs. And there's nothing complicated about this. So it's a nice, easy design to replicate. So I can check my inks on there. Yes, it is. Just add these hairs here, like so. And I'm just giving that time just to soak into my background. 
just give that time especially if like me the cut and you can you see what i've used i've used gray ink so what i've gone and done is i've picked up the morning mist ink so not a problem i'll go in and i will just go over with my micron pen and just fill in my design with the black so if you make a mistake you know don't think it's not rectifiable just think about how you can fix it so because i've got so many inks on my desk I accidentally picked up the morning mist and I'm using my micron pen which is archival and I can just go in and colour as if you were colouring an image I can just go in and what lesson you learn from that is make sure you've got the right inks. Stand it sitting by your side. Just so that you have got the colour you want. we go that's better so easily solved not a problem right let's grab that gray pencil again we need to ground these a little bit press on very lightly you don't want to add too much you shouldn't need to add any more water because you've got you can ground them like so and then I want to add just a little, oh, I love it. Just want to add, I want to add that white bit there, but I'll add that shortly. And I want to add a month, whereas now I have to just find this die set. So I want to add the December here. Or I could add winter, which I'm probably going to go for winter. Let's have a look. Just play around with your design. Yes, we're going to add winter. Just because you've got one idea in your, in, in your mind and you think, this is where I'm going to go with this idea. More often than not, when I'm creating, it changes. It changes all the time. But that's part of the fun. Let's grab a piece of card. And let's try to remember to pick up the right ink. We want black. So the Nocturne ink. Because we want that sentiment to pop against the background details. And again, just give that ink time to just soak into the card go and Tracy's been a good girl and placing that back so that we don't get into a mess just cut that out make sure your fingers don't rest on that sentiment too much if you haven't blotted the ink because that ink stays wet, stays open. So you don't want to smudge it with your fingers. So just give it a blot. Turn it over and give it a blot on another piece of card. Just so that you blot off the excess. So what I'm going to do now is normally when I'm doing my sentiment, if I was doing a, a different style of card, I would outline that in black. But I don't want that harshness for this card. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the ink 
that's on my cut and dry foam from when we were blending around the circle. I've not added any more ink and I'm just going around there and I'm going to use a little bit of the purple as well, just as a little bit of the purple, just to give it a little bit of a two-tone, just so that you can see it's got a little bit of that shading on there. And then I'm going to add this here so it balances this here. Adhesive. Nobody knows which one is working. So take my adhesive. And just place that here. Oops, sorry about that. I've just knocked the camera as I was moving the, the glue. So just allow that just to sit on there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just underneath. Just underneath that sentiment, just so it pops take the excess off just so that pops a little bit there we go wipe that up it's actually a beautiful day today beautiful autumn day i think i'll have to do some gardening um you just i'm just i always have a look so let me just check if the card is dried out a bit yeah you can see when your card dries out a little bit when the ink dries your white pen will go over that but you need to make sure it's dry don't be impatient you just need to just give it time to dry just to just so that you can see that and what i'm going to do now, you know, when I'm doing my cards, I often add a black layer. I don't want to do that to this because I want it to be, very, you know, I want it to be Christmas. I don't want to have that black mat. I want it to be fresh looking. So I'm going to add this piece and I'm going to add that just to... Now, it's entirely up to you, you know, if you want the black mat or you want a darker mat, that's entirely up to you. It's your, it's your card. But I like to keep the freshness of that card, sort of makes it more wintry in some ways. And I just stand above that card just to make sure I've got that evenly spaced. Just so you can see that. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of text around your outside. But for me, the reason I haven't done that, because I've got this detail inside this bauble, it looks more 3D. It's actually flat, but it does look 3D. And I absolutely love that. I love the background as well. Nice, simple background. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll give that a try for your seasonal makes. You can also just finish off a little bit by adding a few little white touches or a little bit of glitter to your tree. What you can do is you can use, let me just grab this. So I can use a quickie glue pen and I can just add some dots just like so, just some dots to the trees. Let's make sure that that is coming out. Yes, it is. So just add some dots to your trees with your quickie glue pen. Don't, don't overpower it. You can add a little bit just around the outer edges as well. And then all you need to do, let's grab that. is use some glitter. I've got some of the Tim Holtz dry glitter from last year. 
and then you can just because you've got that quickie glue pen and it will have dried quite quickly because I've only put a touch down give that a good flick oh yes you obviously you're going to find whoa you're going to find this difficult to see on camera mainly because it's very fine touches of glitter and showing it in camera will be quite difficult but let's see if i can if you can see any of that they can you see that twinkle on the left see there top left bottom right you can see the twinkle so there is if i move it you can see it twinkling so if you add a little bit of glitter that will add a little bit more detail to you and for the recipient that'll be lovely so i hope you enjoyed the demonstration i'd like to thank you all for your kind comments and all of your support as always and i can't wait to see your interpretations and hopefully you'll make some too love to all see you all soon bye for now